Let me explain to you why I collect certain transistor radios or even tube radios. Uh, I collect them uh, based on the schematic. Now, right here, this is a GE P780. Okay, I'm going to rotate this up. I'm going to try not to break my radio. Oh, it already starting. This thing is heavy. Notice it's got a, a grill. Okay? It, they, this is real chrome. I don't know what it's chrome steel. It's heavy as steel. All right, now, I saw an article about this radio. The guy designed it with all the best. Giant ferrite rod. Okay? And not a little cheap little plastic uh, tuning capacitor. The IF cans are the size of uh, a car radio or an AA5. All right. There's a big output transformer for the audio. And I have no clue what this one's for. Okay. I, I actually don't know. It might be some type of choke. Uh, this radio does not use an external uh, power supply of any sort. It, it uses D batteries, okay? But I wanted to show you this radio because this is like pre-1960. 1960, 1960 is, is like a timeline. Everything before 1960, a few months before, where companies were trying to make transistor radios with stuff they already had. Now, this radio was special. It's GE. It's basically the pre, pre, predecessor, I think that's a word, of uh, super radio. I have the super radios one, two, and three, and this is exactly as it's just as good as those. It just has better bass. Uh, look at the size of the honking speaker. Uh, the case is much rigider and larger. I won't say larger, but more rigid. And the guy at it, there's a whole story about this. The guy at GE wanted to show the management that a transistor radio could have the exact sound or even better than a tube radio and here it is and I saw that article and I bought one of these and I got it cheap I got it for 75 bucks from a picker on eBay and it still has all the original dirt and grime on it I did not touch it I did not touch the grill up it's original I did not recap it okay the first time it's ever been open is right now I opened it up for the first time okay and it comes apart with just two screws very nice it opens up all right now you feast your eyes on this. Almost looks like a tube radio. Okay? And that, and back before 1960, there were radios that had some transistors in it and some little miniature tubes. And you'll see those in people's videos. Now, here's another radio. Now, this is my childhood radio. I've showed you the outside. This is a holiday, 1957. And inside, let me get into the frame, you'll notice the tuning caps are regular air type. All right? It's a two section and then you got your larger IF cans okay and uh, there's four one of them actually one of them is actually the oscillator and then the other two are um, IFs and then one is the the IF detector and it's got I believe this one only has oh the other transformers over here there's a transformer under the speaker for push pull output and one of them here so the really good radios always have the two transformers and three IFs and the oscillator, okay? And these are the radios that pick up pretty well. And they're usually six transistor, and they're good around most situations. But the ten transistor ones uh, have an extra transistor up in the, uh, off the antenna, off the tune rod. And notice this tune rod is small, okay? When you see a radio that's for good for DX, the first thing you're going to notice is this rod, the ferret rod antenna, is the full length of the inside of the radio. That's your first giveaway, and I'll show you more. Okay, so now we went from GE before 1960, and then this is a holiday. And they were all building the radios and putting in a lot of extra parts until they found their market. Once they realized that... Uh, the better markets that sold more radios had stronger stations. They started taking components out. But I want to go and show you the radios before 1960. Now I believe this is a channel master. I do believe this is before 1960. Okay. Two giant honking transformers. Okay. 
and these radios always have to be recapped. I will say that someone says, "Wait, well, oh yeah, yeah, these do. They have those gray capacitors that I showed you on the past video." Now you notice, notice that the ferret rod is the full length of the radio. So this is a DX rig, okay? Notice up here, look how many IF cans there are. This is an AM radio only, all right? So you say, well, what is the extra one? Let me get it in the frame. Here's the extra one, see? Normally you have an oscillator and three IFs, but here's the oscillator over here. What is this one? Okay, there's an amplifier off this, this honking antenna, this giant honking antenna. It was a one transistor amplifier. It goes through the transistor, and then it goes out to this guy, and this tunes it at, off the uh, also off the uh, the IF off the uh, tuning capacitor. This is a four section capacitor, okay? So it's got a tuned amplified front end, and then your three IFs, okay? And two, usually one is active, uh, sometimes two, and then the final one is uh, off where the detector diode is, okay? So when you open up a radio and you see a big ferrite rod, and then you count the IFs. Now you can't count the IFs with a with a uh, FM radio because they could share IFs. It gets real tricky. You have to look at the schematic. But what's wrong with this radio is the dial. It's Art Deco. You really can't DX deck well with it. Okay, it's really annoying. It can be done, but uh, if you got one station that's really weak. And you buy one of these recap it you could use it and you get good battery life on the uh a good battery life on the batteries okay and it, it's one of the better radios it's very they used to be very cheap they used to be 20 dollars plus shipping on ebay uh but people started buying them just to get the ferret rod all right and uh but you see these transformers big transformers like this and that's telling you right away right around 1960 maybe before all right now, when you go after 1960, uh, there was a problem in the country. They were putting tariffs on Japanese radios. So the only company really making transistor radios was Zenith. The rest were all, all came from Japan. And take a look at this thing. Now, this is a, this is a, a Westinghouse. I got two of these. Two, it's very similar. It's the same circuit board. All right? Transformers, two of them. Cheesy little... Cheesy little tiny uh, ferret rod. So this isn't going to be a DX rig. Okay. It does have, however, uh, three IFs. One of them is actually the detector. The diode is actually down on the bottom here. Okay. These are the push-pull output audio. So this side of the radio is audio from the volume control all the way down. This side is your RF. Every radio from 1960 on to almost 70, same layout. Uh, people collect these radios for how they look on the outside. That's not how I collect a radio. I collect a radio based on the circuit and performance. And a lot of these smaller radios, when they're at 8 or 10 transistor, you get one more transistor up off the, uh, the ferret rod, and you'll get more stations on it than these. These were made to be cheap, but there's a lot inside of these. All right. Then as the 70s rolled in, you start to see radios. Notice there's only three cans. Okay, one of them's a oscillator. One's the um, 455IF, and then this is the detector one. All right. So really, this radio is about as crappy as you can get. Now I was telling you in the last video, it's very similar to the RCA ones, and I did find one. I got one coming, and it does have um, similar to this, the ones I was working on. Okay. So RCA had a lot of those transistor radios left over, and they weren't made by RCA. Uh, that's the whole cruel thing about this. Now, I don't understand why people are getting so much money for these transistor radios, because most of them, okay, have this same board inside. The outside's different, and they collect it, and, you know, one's got a stand on it, one's got a round speaker, and I know, I believe it was Regency, made the first one, TR1, whatever it was. And um, one guy was saying that's not actually not really a great collectible because uh, it's got a weird battery that goes in it. And the other thing, too, is he finds them at the flea markets or uh, um, garage sales, not a flea market. Dealer knows what they are. He says they're not really that rare, okay? You're paying, you're paying for the, the mystique of the radio, it being the first 
transistor radio in the United States. But this P, what did I say it was? P780GE. This was a radio, and there's a whole story about the guy. And you notice he's got tube-type uh, capacitors in here from like a tube radio. Okay? Everything about this says tubes, except it uses transistors. And I don't know if the transistors are in sockets. They're big honking transistors, though. And I see a, round, a big round one here and an oval one over here. And uh, there's another can down in here. That must be the oscillator. This radio is serious, and it's AM only. It's not FM. So whatever whatever reason, this, there's, there's another can down in there. I'll have to look at the schematic for this thing. But what did I use this radio for? Okay, uh, and I'm going to forget the number of the, of the station. I think it's 790. Look it up. It's Zoomer Radio out of Canada. At night, they, they switch their power and aim it towards the United States, and they play oldies. Uh, at, at 7 o'clock, it's like 70 uh, music. 8 o'clock is 80s, and 90s, 90s music. And on the weekend, they play uh, 40s music, 40 and 50s music. And I find it interesting. This had great sound for that station, okay, because this is full. This The bandwidth of this radio is nice and wide. It's got a great speaker. The, the, the case is really nice. So it works really good. But I just wanted to show you the transition to cheap. Now this one here, I think I said the other day, yeah. There's round transistors with a flat side. But before they got to this, they used these round dome type uh, uh, transistors. And they're supposedly, they go bad a lot. I, I've never seen that. Okay. I might have seen it once in a GE. But... Uh, that, I think they put the batteries in backwards or something on in that case on that radio. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you. And uh, you know, inside the the um, the battery box, my index frame here. Uh, the battery box is nothing nothing cheesy either. Okay, and that's what they're building. They're building high end quality. And this radio, I believe it was a hundred bucks when it came out. And then I saw it, and I'm thinking I can get this thing for less than what it came out with with inflated money so i bought it and this thing it worked right away i didn't have to do anything to it because the guy that picked it put it on ebay as a buy it now and i could tell you how fast i was working to decide whether to buy this or not and i i clicked on it and the guy sent me a letter with it i found this when i was picking a barn or whatever and he wasn't sure it worked you know but anyway i put the batteries in it came right on used it for several months uh, during the winter time for that uh, Zoomer radio. You know, when I'm off camera, I can tell you the frequencies of these stations because uh, 650 is the Grand Old Opry on Friday, uh, on Saturday night. But the problem is now that's on television, on Circle. They have the Grand Old Opry, so it kind of ruins it. But I used to turn the, the Grand Old Opry on once in a while uh, because they shift their power and they get most of the um, East Coast with it at late at night on Saturday night. And it's just fun to listen to it. And the commercials are done live on the stage. So it's a different kind of radio station to listen to. You're not the usual uh, uh, talk radio. And then the commercials are, you know, a hundred of them in a row, real short ones. But uh, I just wanted to show you inside because when you want to see a radio that's good for long distance. Okay, let me show you. Giant honking. This, this is half inch ferrite. That guy spared nothing. And then I'm counting it. There's another coil down here. So this must be, must be the oscillator. Three IFs. And then this one of these is the uh, the tuned RF that goes with the, the ferret rod. So that makes sense. Oscillator down here. Uh, this one tunes with this. And this is a three-section tuning capacitor. Okay. One's the oscillator. The other two, one's the regular RF. And then the RF amp. It's, it's cool. I mean... These are the radios I go for. I don't go for the outside case. And I know a lot of people, oh, it's got this uh, back, back, back drawn letters or something. Back, they have all these terms for how the, the insignias are done on the front of the radio. And that doesn't interest me. What interests me is the circuitry and how they made it cheaper over the years. And how some people went out of their way. To make like a, a a fringe radio now i don't think this says french on it yeah there are channel masters and different ones that say fringe and that means a large honking uh ferret rod and an extra tunable which tunes with the with the ferret rod and the and the tuning cap has four sections on it 
okay it's it's cool stuff all right i think that's it all right that's it